it is brisk. On the last episode, Zach and I started our journey to Antarctica by flying 18 hours around the world to Christchurch, New Zealand. We flew four days apart and both filmed our own separate journeys. The last step is flying south to Earth's southernmost continent. Okay, so I'm going to the airport to get on a C-17, which is what they've told me. So it's like a military plane that has like a hatchback, drops down, you walk out of it. Like it's it's very different from commercial flying. Apparently they transferred three different helicopters on it yesterday. So that's how big this aircraft is. So I'm really excited to show you guys that. And I don't even know what that's gonna be like. Apparently we have to wear like all of our gear on the airplane because it's not heated. So it's just gonna be really cold up there. And I will say, I thought I was gonna be a lot more nervous for this flight down there or just like going down to Antarctica because I thought I was gonna be stranded. And like, yes, I won't be able to go to the grocery store or go on a road trip or like do anything. Like I'm in this confined space for six months, which will be a first. Like I've never had that happen ever in my life. So this will be the first time I've ever been in one spot for a long amount of time. I just can't believe that like it's actually happening tomorrow. You know, we have been thinking about this moment probably since mid-May when we got the official email saying, would you like this position? We applied in March for like six different positions. We were like biting our fingernails like, I don't know, are we going to be accepted? Are we going to be accepted? And then we had interviews. Three different interviews in the Philippines. We happened to be there long enough to have all three interviews in the Philippines. The night we were switching continents, we found out that we were actually getting the jobs. And then we got to Eastern Europe and we were like, oh gosh, we have to get drug tested. How are we gonna do this in a different language? So into Bulgaria, luckily they had someone that could help us out and so we got drug tested in Bulgaria. Like there have been so many steps. And like even when we got home, we had to go through all the medical stuff. We had to get dental exams. We had to get medical exams. We had to like turn in all this paperwork. We had to get so organized. It has been a whirlwind. If I haven't said that word enough, it has been so crazy. And I'm just so excited that we're finally flying down there today. I'm really excited. I don't know what I can film because last time I wrote a review on this camera in really cold conditions, it said the inside cracked. <laughs> so I'm gonna try and film as much as possible of this process getting down there on this gigantic airplane. It's gonna be a five hour flight full of watching Netflix and just chilling. So I'm really excited to show you guys what I'm gonna see. Let's do it. I got my suspenders on. As you can see, it's misting rain. We just checked in our bags. It's very interesting because I thought we were just gonna walk on the tarmac and everything was gonna like be normal, but it was not normal at all. We got checked in by US Air Force agents. That was so exciting. I was like, oh, this is super official now. We had to weigh everything, including myself. Like literally every item that I had, had to be weighed and accounted for to make sure we weren't gonna lopsided the plane. So now we just have 10 minutes to wait and then we're gonna hop on this huge plane.
It is brisk. seventh continent but it's our fourth yeah <laughs> <laughs> so it's quiet time right now so we have to be like kind of whispering at you because it's quiet hours at all hours of the day because people are working 24 7 to get their like research done that they need to get done yeah. so it's always moving here so we have to be a little bit quiet which is great <laughs> i don't mind that actually but we're together oh, we're together and okay so we got here so the plane was crazy she took a what'd you take a 757, which is really just like a regular airline mm -hmm. plane, like mm -hmm. with the three mm -hmm. seats on both sides in one hallway. Yeah. Yeah. And it was pretty much just like a regular plane, except for the fact that <laughs> it was flown by New Zealand military. Oh, okay. And it was a military plane. Well, mine was really different from that. So I took AC-17, which is a military plane, which the day before they had packed with three helicopters that's how big the inside of this plane is and so we just sat on the outside of the plane and then they had stuff in the middle that's crazy it, i heard those helicopters came from texas so when i got out of the plane i was like using my gopro to try and film everything and like I, it, it went pretty far i got on the bus to get here but as soon as i got on the bus it wouldn't turn on again i think the battery like got too cold oh so when i got here i couldn't film anything because oh. my battery was completely done interesting yeah but as soon as i warmed it back up it turned on oh so i didn't even film yeah. when i got outside which would you have didn't? been it would have been so cool because i was literally the first person to step foot off my plane oh. Like, they put the thing down, and then it was like, okay, you go. And, like, it was like walking on the moon, because no one was outside. I was just looking at this barren wasteland, yeah. and I was by myself. But I couldn't film, because the camera that you're looking at now would have cracked instantly, because it's so cold outside. True. Did you love, like, landing? Were you really nervous? I couldn't see. Okay. Yeah. Well, I had a window seat, and oh. I was literally just, like, on the edge, just, like... Oh, how does this work? How do you land on well, ice? I was waiting for a while and they, yeah. And it was, felt like we were descending for a very long, long time. time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, and, and then I got out of the plane, I looked back and they didn't use skis on my plane. They used actual tires. Yeah, because the ice is that thick. Oh. It's crazy. What I heard, they had to use skis, but that was not the case. Mm -mm. No, me neither. And I, I guess you couldn't see, but like, I was like, my head was practically out the window. But they, it was like all these different trucks like waiting for you and there was like a clear runway it was it, it, like it was jam-packed with vehicles for one, beside one plane for one plane That's just crazy. in case i guess like you know like man like managing the the airfield making yeah. sure that it's and safe to land and on stuff and stuff like wow. it was madness and it was cold when I landed, it, it wasn't even windy. Like, I walked outside to go to dinner just now, and I it's hard to breathe. Like, my skin feels like it's about to fall off. Yeah. But at that time, it wasn't windy, and it was still cold. Man, I, I got on the plane, and it was overcast, so the sun wasn't even shining, and it was wickedly windy. And so, like, my sinuses, I swear, started freezing <laughs> on, like, the like five minute walk, not even. It felt long because like everything on my face was just starting to freeze. Oh my God. And I had my sunglasses on cause I wanted to look cool mm -hmm. and not have like the ski goggles, but my sunglasses had like icicles on them. Yeah, they were completely frozen by the time I had gotten to the oh bus. It was God. that cold. When I landed, they said it was negative 18 degrees, but the wind chill made it seem so much Hold on that, because I know what eight, I know what tw under twenty mm -hmm. feels like, because Zach's from families from Minnesota. Minnesota, yeah. So we've experienced that before, but it felt like so much colder than and that. And because it's so dry here, it just like goes through you, like the wind just goes through you. Like humid air, like yes, it does feel a lot colder, but the dry air just like 
feels Thank like you. Yeah, I don't even know how to describe it. Yeah, because it just goes right through you. I mean, this is a harsh environment that like humans are not supposed to be able to survive in. Yeah. It's one of the driest places on earth. Everyone thinks that there's like snow and it's snowing all the time, yeah. but it only rains two inches per year. Like, it's all just snow blowing sideways. It's not actually raining, so it's really dry here. It's crazy. Yeah. But then we, long story short, then we got on the bus, which was a gigantic vessel. Like, the tires were as tall as you were, and we were just like bouncing along. And the speed limit on every road is 25 miles per hour, so it's like very, very slow, but it, it, it let us see like all the mountains and just really take it in because it looks like we're on the moon right now. Plus it takes 45 minutes to get from the airfield to McMurdo. So it's a long drive, <laughs> but you go past the New Zealand military base, mm -hmm. or not military base, the New Zealand research base, which apparently only has 80 people in it. And um, so like the, I learned this is a fun fact. So the New Zealand people, they can come to the McMurdo camp whenever they want. Mm -hmm. They can eat in our cafeteria. They can do all that stuff because it's only eighty people, only eight of them. But there's like nine hundred Americans. So like we're only allowed to go. Are not big enough. Yeah, so we're only allowed to go to their camp to like hang out on Thursdays. Oh. But it's so far. I mean, it's all, it's not that far. It's like maybe a mile. But it like who's walking that? Not me. <laughs> it's so cold. So cold. <laughs> Yeah, and then we got here and they put us like in the training, I don't know, they put us through training and it was so interesting because Leah got the old training, I got the new training and mine was like a whole video that was nicely laid out and it's like speaking of how cold it is, this made me think of this, they were like, you can rent bikes and you can rent skis and like talking about all this stuff that people do outside and like they're filming people that are doing this and I'm just like, I can't even make it two minutes to the mess yeah. hall. Like this is going to be... <laughs> It's so cold, <laughs> but lucky for us, the inside spaces are really big. It's nice and roomy here, and like they have a full size basketball gym. So like, if it ever felt too claustrophobic, yeah. we just go in there and just be like, okay, it's fine. There are multiple gyms. There's a craft room, which I have been to. It is amazing. Oh. They have an entire store. What else do they have? The hairdresser opens on s tomorrow, I think, mm -hmm. or Wednesday or something. Mm -hmm. It's happening this week. There's just a lot of options. There are two bars. I have been to one. I did karaoke night. Unfortunately, Zach wasn't able to make it because he got delayed an entire day I due was to weather. Still in New Zealand, yeah. But it was so much fun, and like, it, the, it's a different culture down here. I think just because like there's nothing to do like you have to hang out with everybody even the people you worked with all day long you're still gonna hang out after work well, and every and i we've all gone through such a hard thing to get here and so once yeah. you're here i feel like the stories that wouldn't come out at a normal you know bar are coming out here because like everyone's like we're in this extreme environment right like, let's just like tell each other everything right now like you can know anything you want and everyone's just super open and interesting mm -hmm. there's not one person down here that i've been like oh yeah i just I was doing nothing and I came here, yeah. you know, like yeah. everybody has a very... And you guys are like thinking like we're travelers. Big story, yeah. But these people are like travelers. Like I don't know how to, they, they spend less money than we do. We thought we were spending too little amount on our accommodations, but they spend even less. They stay in tents, they go to places we wouldn't have dreamed of. So yeah, they're giving us so many ideas of where to take you guys on like the next adventure because there are so many things I didn't know about until talking to people that have been here. So we've pretty much started settling in. Zach has moved all the furniture. Rooms rearranged. We'll show you that in a different video. Yeah. yeah, so this is the video on how we got to Antarctica, and it was a long journey from a one and a half hour flight to Houston, then a 15 hour flight to New Zealand, then a one and a half hour flight to Christchurch, and then a six hour flight to the ice, and then an Plus hour drive. Plus multiple delays, in the and bus. a week later, here we are. <laughs> <laughs> Flew separately, but now we are together, and it's going to be so cool to show you guys what this continent has to offer. Yeah. Bags. Then I have to go get well passport control, and then a visa. Or is it a visa and then a passport? They got like pants. They got these bunny boots, and there's like a bajillion gloves. <laughs>